fucking fury, some rage, something, whatever is happening, like, this is not okay. And that's primarily what anger is. Whether it's real or not, the story of what I'm thinking about, plus the sensation here, it feels like a boundary is being crossed. And now to be able to try to figure out where that boundary is being crossed and what to actually do about it, what would be an appropriate response is how to start to step into anger a little bit and feel what it feels like and have it move through the body. Whatever begins in anger ends in shame. It was Benjamin Franklin, I think, who said this. This is a really interesting idea. It's all energy competition, hey? So we look at this dynamic where people are in arguments with one another and you have one person that tries to convince another person that what they've done is bad and wrong and then this other person hopefully will submit and acquiesce. This is the fight response, this is the shutdown response. The shutdown response, basically something like shame, very closely linked to shame, shame and disgust, they will turn that inwards, their narrative will be, I am so bad, essentially. It's this rising terror of, I'm gonna be ostracized from the group, coupled with this intense suppression of, I need to make myself really non-threatening so that they'll allow me back into the group. And then it's kind of back and forth, back and forth to see who can stay the most composed within that rising energetic dynamic. We actually also do that to ourselves as well. So it could be that we've had an angry outburst, we've reacted to anger, or we've let anger act us out. It pulls our strings. That moment of rage just bubbles over and that's the moment that we might find ourselves having done something or said something that just feels like, oh, that is potentially something that is gonna get me kicked out of the tribe. So when you get angry at yourself, you're also creating shame in yourself. It's like you're creating that divide. I'm saying no to this part of myself and trying to bully this part of myself. And that part of myself is shutting down and going into that freeze mode and I'm hoping that my coercive techniques are going to help to restore some sense of order to this internal environment rather than what I actually need to do is connect with all of these feelings. I need to connect with the anger, I need to connect with the shame, I need to let that connection start to work out these tensions by itself, you know, because that's really the antidote to so much of this stuff is connection. Um, and that means being present with what's happening in the moment. So we're looking at anger. While we look at anger, we have to look at how to start to get anger into the body a little bit, how to start to move it in through the body, how to start to somaticize it so it doesn't stay stuck up in here and just keep generating as stories and thoughts. Typically when I'm working with people who have a lot of suppressed anger, it's common that in that scenario they will have given up some boundary in order to keep the peace easier for me in the moment to be able to just say yes because i don't want to deal with the stress of what this argument and fight might produce and anger is actually physiologically stressful obviously if you practice it more and more and you get good at being present and grounded in the body while this thing is happening then it starts to take less of a toll on the body. But for a lot of people, anger is really, really stressful. I read a statistic. A couple of minutes of anger is equivalent to five hours of suppressed immune response. So having anger circulating around in your body and not having dealt with this suppressed anger that might just be latent from all of the times when you said yes, when you meant no, is something that is really, really important. It also appears to be a link between suppressed anger and depression, a very vital life protecting energy of anger that says no, that protects your boundaries. If that gets suppressed and disconnected from, that's when we can start to feel like depression. There's nowhere for it to go. There's nowhere for it to land. Ideally, if we'd have had the perfect childhoods, that would have looked like I'm having this angry expression and the adult around me is regulated enough to be able to say, yeah, okay, let's see that. Let's get it into the body. It's good that you can express this. So then it has a place to land. It's okay that I can express this anger. It's okay that I can protect myself, that I can defend myself. Actually, that's quite good. That's necessary. Whenever anger has a place to land and it's met with this, it's happening. There's an experience happening here and it gets acknowledged. That's when it can find a place to order itself within our psyche. And the ability to say no is so important because obviously if you're saying yes too much and not saying no and then you're building up all of this suppressed anger and suppressed rage then that's going to manifest eventually tension in the body 
is the breeding ground for things like sickness and disease. So having a place where you can actually let anger land and feel it and make sure it doesn't get stuck here. Whenever we start to feel some intensity of experience like anger, our body might get stiff and tight. And as it gets stiff and tense, it's like it moves everything up to here and we start just circulating in these stories about anger rather than having this full body experience and being present with it. We need a space to be able to hold the intensity of what we're experiencing. So that's why it's really important to start to bring the body in, bring the breath in, bring the tapping in, we'll work with the narratives, things like that. But the first thing we're gonna do is start to acknowledge that we're having a really intense experience right now. And it feels like, this phrase is kind of deadly because it feels like and what it is, is not the same thing. The feeling is what's happening in the body. A sensation of warmth or high tempo heartbeat in my chest here. The story about the feeling is what you might say it feels like. And then there's this bunch of stories that you're hoping somebody can relate to. If this were the case, then this would be the experience from that. Anger could be mobilizing from something that happened say 20 years ago that's been latent for all this time and suddenly something touches that same thing and the same anger comes up but it's not actually appropriate for the moment as in the response is maybe miscalibrated because you perhaps haven't had that full experience of being able to work with your own anger and breathe with it and settle with it and start to bring it into the body and just basically say yes to it in a safe way that it doesn't end up destroying something in a moment that could have been avoided if there was this place for anger within your psyche and you knew how to calibrate with the energy levels. I think about this in regards to my martial arts background and how you see this when people first start. All this physical intensity and aggression, but it's not honed and channeled. Like there isn't a connection within that. They haven't learned to move and flow with that energy. And it's the same when we're thinking about anger as well and how to move and get kind of flexible and build our capacity to be able to hold that intensity because if we're tense it's going to end up acting us out basically steer us and push us around to do what it wants us to do rather than what we want to do with it this is a little bit of what we're going to look at today probably in your life you have a time where something has happened where you started to feel that rising energy you can conjure up that image in your mind now that kind of rising tempo that perhaps that's coupled with a tension that comes in the body, you can start to feel the tension. So as you start to feel that tension rise, we're just gonna to start to swing the arms and swing the shoulders and start to open up the breath a little bit. Sending a signal to the body that we need to breathe. We're just gonna keep doing this. Bring the hands above the head like this. I'm going to throw the hands down. Bring the hands above the head. And again, hands above the head. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to start to swing the arms up and as we bring them together we're going to slap one karate chop side into the palm of the other so it looks like this okay we're going to shake the hands Pause the video here if you want and keep doing this as many times as you need to, just so you start to feel this slight lightheadedness of something like the tensions being acknowledged in the body. What we want to keep from doing is going straight up to here. You can think the thoughts, but just make sure that you're breathing and moving and giving this anger a body at the same time. It's really important to give it a body so it doesn't 
just materializes stress and tension and keep generating these stories up in the head. We need to listen to them in a deeper way than just letting them take us where they want us to go. Drop into that space between the words of those thoughts and just let them come up, let them circulate. You wanna start with where you're at. So if it feels like you are aggressive, start to kind of let that aggression show itself somatically. Once you feel like that space in your brain is starting to widen a little bit, you can start to slow these things down and start to move in a little bit more gentle way. Do whatever movements feel intuitive to you as well. First, you have to meet it where it's at with that same level of intensity without necessarily expelling it outwards, without turning it inwards, but just somatizing it, just being with it in the body. And then gently, as it starts to come down naturally, you can follow it down and let the movements mimic that. And then when you feel like you've done enough of that, when you feel like you've actually built a little bit of space in the brain, that's when we're gonna to go to start to look at these thoughts from a little bit more of a grounded and embodied place and start to look at where we are at and try to pass that out from what might be triggering the anger, which is something that's potentially quite old. It could be late and it could be, there's a lot of suppression, a lot of anger that has never been heard before, a lot of boundaries that have been transgressed. And the time where we wanted to say no and get angry, we had to suppress that to survive. And it's really important that we did that because we ended up surviving, but now we wanna be able to start to feel a bit safer, to feel that anger in our bodies and know where to place it appropriately. Being angry is easy. Being angry in the right place with the right person at the right time is very difficult. I can't remember who said it, I think it was a stoic, but it works.